In this video series, it's going to be about extravagant worship. Kent, could you say it again? All right, thanks for asking. It's going to be extravagant worship. This is one of the most profound teachings the Lord's ever given me. It's one of the greatest teachings ever done for conferences. This is our own, this is my costly perfume. This is my costly perfume. You know the story? You saved my life and forgave my sin. I'll worship you until the end. Here is my costly perfume. This is my costly perfume. It's my heart, Lord. Yeah. This is my costly perfume. This is my costly perfume, Jesus. You saved my life, you forgave my sin. I worship you till the end. This is my costly perfume. This is my cause. Come on. You got it. It's very simple. I got it right before we started the video table. Oh, yeah. This is my costly perfume, Jesus. The Savior and my friend. This is my costly perfume, Lord. You saved my life and forgave my sins. I worship you to the very end. This is my costly perfume. Ooh, this is my costly perfume. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Extravagant worship. The real place of intimacy and freedom. Anointing the Lord. I'm going to post this teaching so you can just download it. You can print it for free. Many of us are familiar with the story of the woman with the alabaster box. Matthew 26, verses 6 through 13. How much has been attributed to this act of extravagant worship? Extravagant means wandering beyond the limits. It's not status quo. Get extravagant. Extravagant worship always changes your life as you're touching the royal robe of the Son of God. Extravagant. Have you been extravagant lately in any way, shape, or form? In the natural, in the spirit. It's part of the teaching. I want you to say it out loud. Extravagant. Sounds so good. Say it out loud again. Extravagant. This is my costly perfume, Lord. This is my costly perfume. Oh. You saved my life and forgave my sin. I worship you until the end. This is my costly perfume. Ooh, this is my costly perfume. We gotta do it again now. Do some more teaching. Yeah, this is my costly perfume. This is my costly perfume poured out on you. Cause you saved my life and forgave my sins. Worship you to the living end. This is my costly perfume. So here's the scripture. Let me read the scripture to you and over you. Now when Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper. Wow. What? Jesus showed up at Simon the leper's. He's healed now. 
He was one of those 10 lepers that got healed. And he's healed. He said, Jesus, thank you so much for healing and saving my life, touching my life. He said, would you come to my house? And Jesus said, sure, let me look at my calendar. <laughs> he didn't say that. <laughs> but he said, Simon, I'd be glad to come to your house. You healed man. And when they got over there, the disciples, it was a oh, word got out. It's a big disciples fray. It was a disciples party. And it says a woman in the middle of the big social gathering. And Jesus is at Simon the leper's house. Think with me now. A woman came in to Jesus with an alabaster vial, a bottle. Probably wasn't a box, it was a bottle. It's costly. Very costly perfume. Some commentators say it was uh, her grandmother gave it to her as an inheritance. It was a year's wages. A costly, beautifully fragrant perfume that was possibly an heirloom that she poured on Jesus' head and his feet. <laughs> you know what she's saying? This is my costly perfume. This is my costly perfume. You saved my life. You forgave my sins. I worship you to the very end. This is my costly perfume. Yeah. This is my... You got it? I think you're, this is so touched by the Holy Spirit right now. It's touching me while I'm sharing it. So a woman came into him at Simon the leper's house with an alabaster vial, V-I-A-L. They still use vials to take blood today. This was an ornate bottle, a very costly perfume. The other translations say it was an alabaster jar or bottle full of very expensive fragrant oil. An alabaster flask of ointment, very precious. And she poured it. She poured it. This is in real time. What I'm reading to you out of Matthew 26 right now is probably the number one most extravagant act of worship ever done to the person of the Lord Jesus and his earthly ministry. I know you didn't hear that, so I'm going to say it again. The number one most extravagant act of worship ever done or performed unto or given to the Lord Jesus was this woman with the alabaster vial. She poured it on his head. She poured it on his feet. Mixed with her tears, it's quite a scene. It's quite a scene of worship, extravagant worship. And you know what she said to Jesus? This is my costly perfume poured out, poured out on you. This is my costly perfume, Jesus. You saved my life, you forgave my sins. I worship you to the living end. This is my costly perfume. This is my costly perfume. I give it all. I give it all. She put it out freely. At whatever cost it was, she poured it out freely, anointing his head and anointing his feet. No one else had anointed his head, which they should have already done. They didn't anoint his feet and wash his face. So she came in with the alabaster box of royal perfume. 
This is my costly perfume, Lord. This is my costly perfume. You saved my life. You forgave my sins. I worship you to the living end. This is my call sleep. She poured it on his head, so like the song, like oil upon your feet. Are you been have you been pouring out your extravagant worship individually, in devotion, in your car on the way to work, at, at your church, your Bible study on Tuesday night? I'm just reminding you, this is the first of a four-part series on extravagant worship. You can't do that. There's not enough to teach. Oh, yeah. There's enough to teach. This is just the first of four parts on extravagant worship. Us learning and growing even more to pour out our worship on the Son of God. Love you guys. God bless.